Well, let's begin. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, here today. Uh, we're on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations. I want to uh, thank uh, Chief Roland uh, Wilson of West Moberly and Chief Ken Cameron of SOTO for uh, meeting with me earlier today. I want to thank Brad Sperling uh, and the Regional District for inviting me uh, to come and speak with them today about the challenges that we faced here in the community with respect to uh, our unique and our collective efforts to uh, make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect caribou now and into the future. This is not a new issue for the region. Uh, we've been talking about caribou and uh, their uh, potential extinction since 2003. The federal government, through the Species at Risk Act, directed the province to take action in 2014 and again in 2018. So I'm joined here with my minister, Doug Donaldson, the Minister of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development. And I'm also joined by Blair Lextrom, former cabinet minister, uh, former MLA, former mayor, and now current councillor in Dawson Creek. And Blair's here because I've asked him to be my community liaison for the next six weeks as we continue on with the consultation with respect to also our, our uh, Section 11 agreements as well as any potential additional challenges that the community feels need to be addressed. Uh, I feel that Blair is uh, well respected in the community, he's certainly well respected by me. It will give us an opportunity in Victoria to look at the feedback from the community in a more focused way. I want to commend uh, Mike Bernier, the member of the legislature from the area who tabled a significant petition last week drawing a particular attention to the challenges we have here in the region. <coughs> but my biggest concern is that a region that has by and large worked cooperatively on a whole host of issues over many, many generations is coming to confrontation over the caribou question. I believe everyone in the region wants to take steps to protect caribou. I believe everyone in the region wants to protect jobs as well. So how do we do that? How do we come forward as a, a provincial government that's being directed by the federal government to take action? We have an obligation nation to nation to deal with Soto and West Moberly. Their constitutional rights to access caribou have been foregone by them in the interest of preserving the stocks. The, the Soto and the West Moberly have been working tenaciously for a long time to protect these animals and we have entered into a government to government discussion with them and now we're entering into a broader consultation with the community. I regret we didn't start that consultation earlier. I regret we didn't put more information before the public, but we are where we are. Blair Lextrom and I have known each other for a long time. We spoke candidly earlier in the week, about uh, earlier last week, about the challenges here in the peace and how we could come together, how the peace could come together to protect these very important animals, not just uh, to the people of the peace, but the people of Canada. The Species at Risk Act was brought in by the federal government. They expect to enforce that act. I believe we need to come together in the region, we need to come together in the province and come up with a land use plan that protects jobs, protects caribou, and also protects the constitutional rights of indigenous people. Blair is well suited to help me in that regard. Doug Donaldson and I are gonna be working closely with Blair over the next number of weeks. Um, I think I just announced that I've added four more weeks to the consultation. I'll say that we've added four more weeks to the consultation. It was to end April 30th. It will now go to May 31st. Some people will feel that's not enough time. I believe that that's adequate time to get to where we need to be. That's bringing the community back together in unison, focused on the economic well-being of everybody in the region, as well as the viability of the caribou. So with that, so I'll ask maybe uh, Blair to step in and say a word or two, and then I'll take some questions. Well, thank you very much, Premier, uh, for being up here, Minister, for coming. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you, to uh, certainly the people that came out to the meetings to hear about the issues, to discuss, to raise their concerns and talk about it. Uh, Ken, Roland, thank you for being here. Uh, I think it's fair to say, and I said this at the meeting in Dawson Creek, we're all in this together. Uh, we all want to try and ensure we can look after the caribou at the same time maintaining the quality of life we have here for the people looking after the families and their jobs. I'm confident we can do that together. Premier, as you said, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, thank you for reaching out and uh, having the discussion that we had to say what do we do to try and get. We can't change what's happened yesterday or the day before or five minutes ago, 
But today, moving forward, I want to say thank you because this is what our region asked for. We asked to be engaged, to have the opportunity to put our input into how we think we can do this together uh, with our First Nations neighbours. Uh, you know, we all grow up together here. You know, we, we talk about us and them, and I said this at the meeting, it's not us and them, it's all of us together. And we're going to work towards that. We're going to work towards finding a solution. I'm an optimist and uh, I'm looking forward. I, I'm not naive enough to think this won't be without its challenges, Premier, and uh, I will do my best to hear from the region to bring you back a, a report that is something that I believe is going to be workable uh, to not only save the caribou but to maintain our, the health of our communities, the families that work there, and their children's future for generations to come. We, uh, we're here because we love this area as we love the province and our country and we're going to do that in a collaborative manner. So thank you very much, Premier. All right. Thanks. Doug, you want to weigh in? Or? Minister. I'll slide over this side. <laughs> sure, I'll just add a few words just to say uh, we recognize that this has been a challenging process for the people who live in the Northeast and as a government a challenging process as well. I mean, these, this is caribou. Uh, this is uh, federal jurisdiction, First Nations jurisdiction and provincial jurisdiction. And these are the kind of challenges that we're up to facing. Uh, there's been uh, processes put in place in the past. We're determined to create better processes into the future. And I just look forward to the work that Blair's going to do. We've listened uh, to the local MLA and listened to people by providing the extension and uh, really looking forward to getting work underway. I've known Blair for quite a few years as well. Uh, when he was a minister and I was uh, a councillor with the village of Hazelton, used to come into meetings with him at UBCM and I saw his style, I appreciated his style, I try to emulate that now that I'm a minister as well. And so I uh, really uh, have a lot of confidence in the process and the fact gathering and the information that Blair is going to be able to gather and, and present to us as a government. So thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Okay, we're going to do some questions. Uh, let's go to the room first. If you could lift your questions to one and a follow-up, that would be excellent, because there's a lot of folks here. Uh, I have the microphone, and if you have a question, please raise your hand, and I will come to you. Thank you. Uh, Adam with uh, Moose FM and Energetic City. Uh, one of the things that I think we heard from consultations in the region a couple weeks ago was a lot of people are concerned that this is already a draft agreement. So will any of the things that were brought forward as concerns actually be changed in the agreement going forward? Well, what, I, what I've what i discovered over the past uh, six weeks is that there's a significant amount of misinformation or a lack of understanding of how we got here within the broader public. And that's absolutely understandable. As we talked uh, with the regional district before uh, this press conference, uh, people are getting on with their lives. And all of a sudden, a large consultation drops down in front of them. They say, how did we get here? So we as a new government didn't do enough work to prepare the public for this process. We had an obligation, a, a constitutional obligation, to engage with Soto and West Moberly, and we did that. We also had a public obligation to weigh in with the community, and that now is going to happen with Blair's leadership and the leadership of the uh, uh, representatives on the regional district who we met with today. The challenge is that uh, we need to protect the caribou. These are federal laws that we will be running afoul of if we don't take action. More importantly, the caribou have been vital and iconic to this region and to the people of Canada for a long, long time. We need to do our part to protect that. But we also have to look at a whole range of other issues. On the land base, the, the beetle kill has come and gone. Uh, the annual allowable cut would have been coming down anyway, regardless of government changes, regardless of caribou, there is a dwindling fiber supply. And that's why I reached out to the Council of Forest Industries last week, prior to talking about caribou, to talk about how we manage the timber supply areas around the province, particularly here in the north. And um, the challenge I made to the executives of those forest companies is we need to sit down with local representatives, indigenous representatives, and working people, and figure out how we make the best out of the wood that we have available. Not so much high volume, but high value when we're working in, our, in the woods and we're creating jobs and economic opportunity, not just in the piece, but throughout the interior. Hi, Premier. Matt Prebrost here with the Alaska Highway News. I have uh, two questions here. I'll start with this one. 
Uh, last year, the Quebec government uh, basically threw up their hands and allowed a caribou herd to die off because it was quote unquote too expensive. Uh, the federal government uh, has not intervened in that matter like they are here in BC. Yeah. Do you think that's fair? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things that aren't fair in life. Uh, that may well be one of them. What I do know is that I have an obligation as the leader of the government of British Columbia to discharge our responsibilities uh, here in British Columbia. And one of those is to ensure that we don't see the expiration or extirpation of uh, mountain caribou. And I know that the people in this region feel the same way. And working together, uh, we can find ways forward. The, the West Moberly and Soto have already been doing a good deal of work in this regard in terms of maternal penning, in terms of uh, foregoing any hunt of any kind, uh, a significant hunt of any kind. And we need to work together to find other creative ways. The, uh, uh, the uh, predator uh, issue is one that is uh, controversial in m many parts of British Columbia, but has demonstrated success here in the piece. So uh, although uh, the, the, your question is a very good one about fairness, all I can deal with is the responsibilities that I have today, and that is uh, listening. I heard what the people had to say at the public meetings that have taken place. I've asked a prominent person in the community to help me get through this and then bring that with Doug to our cabinet and then uh, make decisions that I'm hopeful will uh, be in line with the federal responsibilities that are coming our way. That are, that, uh, there's also uh, petitioners in court not just the federal government, who may well push this issue faster, and we'll have to deal with that as well. Thank you, and uh, just one more. Um, it's been said that um, the agreements being developed here in the Peace Region are going to be basically templates for uh, other caribou herds in the, in the province, and, and one thing that we're hearing uh, loud and clear up here is, yes, these are government-to-government -government, uh, negotiations and discussions, but the one government that's been left out of this process is the local government. Mm -hmm. Moving forward on caribou recovery across BC, you know, what is your government's uh, commitment to including local governments in these negotiations so that um, the local governments and, and the public in these areas actually have um, shared agency with both the province, the federal government, and the First Nations on caribou recovery? Yeah, well, we've, uh, we've certainly learned a good lesson from this process, and uh, we're, Doug and I are both taking that to heart as we look at other uh, communities, and we, we're dealing with the, the Kootenays as next in line on, on the, the caribou front. But I think it's, it illustrates a challenge that we have on the land base, broadly speaking. We've been involved in, in uh, sophisticated land use planning in British Columbia for decades and decades, and not everyone can be at the table. But you have to have a cross-section of the public represented if you're going to have the social license you need to proceed with industrial activity or uh, protection of, of uh, the land base. Either way, you need to make sure there's adequate people at the table. I felt this issue's been around for 16 years. It didn't just arrive on my watch. The, uh, the first call for uh, action was 2003. So I made an expect, I had an expectation that the public was better informed on this than they were. And that's on me, not on the public. The public's getting on with their lives. People deal with issues when they emerge. Governments need to anticipate those issues and address them in, in a way that doesn't lead to the type of animosity, quite frankly, that we've had at public meetings uh, since this issue broke publicly. So I've learned a lesson from that, and as we go forward, we're gonna do a better job of making sure that we allow people some time to understand why we're having the conversation, lay out quite clearly, this is a federal issue, it's not an indigenous issue, it's not a provincial issue, it was brought to us by the federal government and their legislation, and now we all have an obligation to try and find a way forward, and I think all of us are gonna be doing that now. Austin Kozgar with the Dawson Creek Mirror. Uh, has the province considered its own legislation to protect endangered species so we can address these issues provincially without the federal government intervening? Uh, we have uh, looked at, there is no significant species at risk legislation uh, on the docket for the foreseeable future here in British Columbia. It's something that we looked at during the election campaign. Now as we're feeling the, the consequences of the federal legislation, that will help inform us going forward in terms of our legislative uh, timetable and what we're going to be bringing forward. But what I, what I have learned is that I've, I've reached out to the federal government. They've been talking to me about their expectations uh, on this file. And I think that there is uh, 3,000 miles between here and Ottawa, and it feels like 10,000 miles on days like today. It's difficult to have a conversation with the federal government when you're living in BC because it's a long, long way away. So we need to have accountability at all levels. That means 
Uh, I take first and foremost responsibility for doing a better job going forward by making sure that I'm hearing directly from local councils. My uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Selena Robinson, has been doing, I think, particularly good work making sure that in those areas where we don't have a member of the legislature uh, in our caucus, that she's reaching out to elected representatives. I met with uh, Mayor Bumstead, uh, it's a year ago now, but the intention was to meet more regularly, to be up to speed on the issues that are happening, not just in the peace, but in other areas where the government is underrepresented in the legislature. But we, we govern for all British Columbia, including the peace. Uh, I, I, Mike Bernier and I have had a, a positive working relationship, uh, and we've also had an acrimonious partisan one, because that's the nature of our workplace. But Mike knows he can talk to me anytime about any issue, uh, and I want to keep that going forward, not just on this issue, but a whole range of other issues as well. Um, some groups are, are publishing stock answers to submit for their supporters to submit and, and influence the consultation process. Um, how will your government sift through answers in, in this consultation yeah. process and really get to meet? It's always a challenge uh, in an era of social media. It's always difficult to, uh, well, and I talk to uh, Chief Wilson and Chief Cameron about the the uh, positive and negative elements of social media and our ability to communicate uh, broadly. Sometimes it's malicious communication and not always with the best of intentions and we need to be mindful of that as well. It's a challenge in the 21st century to wade through what is a stock uh, response and what is a heartfelt concern uh, but that's not just my problem, that's the problem of elected representatives around the world. Thank you. Uh, Randy with CJDC TV News in Dawson. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of his question. Why wasn't local government involved in the first place? Why did you feel it necessary not to involve them? Well, it wasn't about necessarily not involving them. We had a constitutional obligation to deal with Indigenous issues on this question, uh, constitutional issues. We would have no such uh, re requirements with municipal governments. Municipalities are, as the saying goes, creations of the provincial government. And so we are interacting with uh, municipal uh, leaders all the time on a whole range of issues. On this question, why I've uh, decided to bring Blair in to help me is that this is clearly an issue that has enraged some people and inflamed passions. And I can't feel that in real time on the ground because of my responsibilities in Victoria. Blair can do that. The mayors and, and regional directors are f absolutely free to reach out and talk to me at any time about their concerns. But it wasn't about exclusion. It was about our constitutional obligations with respect to the Indigenous peoples. And I, and I also want to say, uh, with respect to Chief Cameron and Chief Wilson, they were, uh, we had non-disclosure agreements because of some of the sensitive uh, material that was in, in question. So they were uh, impaired in their ability to talk to the public. So again, uh, lesson learned that uh, we need to have a better way going forward. This is our first uh, engagement, uh, both Doug and I, on an issue of this magnitude in an area that we don't have elected representatives who can be our sounding boards. So we've learned a lot of valuable lessons and I appreciate that cold comfort to those who have been uh, angered over the past number of weeks, but as Blair said, I can't deal with yesterday, but I can deal with tomorrow. And we have a plan going forward that I believe will engage everyone in an issue that people want to engage in. They want to protect the caribou, but they also want to make sure that economic activity continues. Okay. And sorry, just one more. Can you talk about what the meeting was about this morning at all? Which one? The private one. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, in here? Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, the councillors or, or regional district uh, representatives uh, talked to me about their concerns, uh, what they've heard. Uh, what they feel and to a person they said they wanted to dial down the acrimony in the community and the, the camps that have been emerging and get back to a place where the communities are working together, indigenous and non-indigenous, federal and provincial governments, everybody working together to come up with a solution to this issue. It is again not something that happened yesterday. It's been around for a long time. There have been some positive initiatives that have been un undertaken here in the peace that we want to duplicate or in fact dial up in the future. And not just here, but in other parts of the province where caribou are at risk. So it was a very pro uh, productive meeting. Uh, I met a couple of people for the first time. Others I've known for a good deal of time, and uh, they uh, gave me their views in a candid way. <laughs> Do we have any other questions from the room? Oh. Peter Marino, Peace FM, and Chet TV News. I was just, as you spoke before, the 
the Peace Region was more of a cooperative group until this caribou issue. Was that a huge shock for the NDP government? Uh, well, I, I don't know about that. Uh, again, uh, I assumed, because I've been aware of this issue uh, from a public policy perspective for a long time, well, in fact, like years, that I assumed that the level of understanding was the same for everybody. And that's just, that's, that's my bad. Uh, I would have had a better opportunity had uh, uh, Mike and I, uh, Mike Bernie and I talked about this beforehand, but there was nothing to talk about. The, the federal government was taking action. Uh, we had to forestall that action. Part of that was dealing directly nation to nation with the title holders here in Treaty 8 territory. And so we were, we were undertaking our obligation as were uh, Chief uh, Wilson and Chief Cameron uh, in re respect to their communities. But they're also very mindful of the broader community. They live here, they're neighbors. And I heard it to a person around the table today and in my uh, meeting separately with the chiefs. Everybody are neighbors here. We played ball together, we grew up together, our kids are friends, they go to school together. This is not an issue that should drive people apart. It should be an opportunity to celebrate people working together in the interest of wildlife and in the interest of the economy. And I think that's where everybody wants to go. And uh, speaking of economy, would uh, previous logging permits that have been made before these publications came to be, are those still being used? Well, certainly, uh, you want to dive in on that one? Yeah. There's been no uh, agreements finalized or signed, so uh, the previous uh, tenure agreements are fully in place, and uh, as uh, the agreements with the input of uh, uh, greater input through uh, through Blair and through communities get finalized, uh, then there'll be a transition time as well. But the agreements that are in place now are, are agreements that are in place. And I, I, would, I would just add to that as well that, uh, I, as I said, I spoke to the Council of Forest Industries last week. Uh, it is no surprise that there was a spike up in the annual allowable cut uh, because of the beetle kill and a desire by everyone to get uh, as much merchantable timber out of our dying forests where the beetle had hit as possible, and that now is passed. So prior to this discussion around caribou, there was a real challenge around fiber supply for forestry, not just here in the Peace, but in the interior, on the islands where there was no beetle kill, but there is a challenge. And, and Minister Donaldson is working with statutory decision makers, people that don't get influenced by governments, uh, whatever the government may be, to determine how we apportion that timber across the province. What I asked Kofi to do was to sit down with Indigenous leaders, uh, labour leaders, and uh, community leaders and figure out how we can make sure that every timber supply area is adequately meeting the needs of the communities in that area. I think it's long overdue. I think the public feels that way as well. And I'm confident that industry will work with us to get to that place. We have time for a few questions from the phone. We have any on the line. Uh, yes, we do have one question, but just as a quick reminder, please press zero one to jump for questions. So, first question is from Bob Weber from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, Mr. Premier. Um, for the benefit of those of us who aren't in Peace River, can you please tell us what are the specific issues that you hope to thrash out over the, uh, the four weeks you've added to this consultation period? And um, can you say what what was it that uh, that made you add the the extra four weeks? What was it that made you realize that, that more consultation was required? Well, firstly, I'll, I'll go from the back to the front. Uh, we decided to add additional time to the consultation because it was clear that the public wasn't satisfied with the information they were getting. Uh, we're a minority parliament. Uh, Doug and I and and Mike and others are in the legislature. We're on a down week this week, that's why I'm able to be here. So when, at these public meetings where often you'd like to have an elected representative, uh, we were sending uh, public officials who were in some instances not able to answer the questions the public was bringing up because they weren't connected to the specific issue at play. So it was a, it, my, my immediate concern was there was a lack of understanding of what, what we were trying to accomplish here and it was taking on uh, uh, proportions that were beyond what was intended. And so the first order of business was to get back on track to say how can we all work together to protect mountain caribou. Everyone agrees that that's a, a desirable objective. Federal legislation says it's a required objective. 
And so how do we do that and continue to have economic activity on the land base, access to uh, backcountry activities as well, which were not part and parcel of any of the agreements that we've had to this point in time, but absent a full framework, people were conjuring in their minds the worst outcomes uh, possible. And so we wanted to just nip that right now. Uh, Blair is able to uh, answer, uh, or at least to listen and potentially answer questions that will emerge uh, in the future. And what we want to accomplish in the next six weeks is to dial down the concern in the community and get back to that harmonious family atmosphere that you have in the peace country. We're a long, long way from everywhere here. Everyone knows that, and it's by choice. People come to the peace or, or stay in the peace born in the peace because it's a spectacular place to live. And we all want to get back to that spot where uh, the only competition is between Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. <laughs> Are there any further so questions on the line? If I understand you correctly then, sir, you're, you're saying that the concerns are due to uh, or about, about fiber access for local industry and about backcountry access for local recreationists, is that correct? Those are, those are two issues, absolutely. And again, a better understanding of well, what uh, the uh, caribou uh, recovery plan, what impact that plan will have on those activities and any other activities that are contemplated. Clearly the public has demonstrated uh, that they want to have a conversation about this and it's my responsibility as a leader of the government to make sure that conversation can take place and to have confidence, uh, not just on my side but on the other side, uh, that uh, someone like Blair Lackstrom can wade through uh, the information and bring forward a coherent report that we can act on. Again, mindful that the objective is uh, protecting and enhancing a wildlife recovery for mountain caribou. Any Thank other you, questions on the line? Uh, yes, we have about six more. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have time for about two more. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, perfect. So the next one in line was from Josh Page from CBC Radio. Go ahead. Hi, thanks so much for taking my question. Um, you're heading to, or the consultations head to the Cooties this week where uh, there are no caribou in some of those herds, so cell curve cell per cell are just in a pen. Yeah. Uh, how prepared uh, is the government to do whatever it takes, even if it's not popular, uh, to keep herds stronger in the peace than, than what's happened in the cooties? Well, the, the, the Selkirk uh, example, I think, is an illustrative one for all of us, that if we don't take action now, uh, that what was once a sea of caribou, uh, you know, Chief Rowland told me, about elders who used to talk about uh, you couldn't see the ground for all of the caribou in the piece. Well, that's not the case today. And in, in the Selkirks, there are three animals, and they've, been moved. and they've been moved, so they're not even there anymore. So th these are uh, cautionary tales, of, I, I believe. And as we get into discussions in the Kootenays, uh, I think there there's, won't be the same level uh, of, uh, of impact because, uh, quite frankly, it's more mountainous <coughs> terrain. Uh, you have uh, vast distances here where you can see the caribou coming. That's not the case in Revelstoke or, or uh, Cranbrook. And we have time for one more question from the phone. Okay, perfect. And uh, the next one was from Tanya Fletcher from CDC. to go ahead. Hi, Premier. Uh, thanks so much. Um, in tracing this back to Ottawa, do you really think the federal government would risk the backlash of unilaterally shutting down the industry? Uh, good question, and, and uh, I, I would suggest that uh, better put to them. I didn't want to take that risk. Uh, I have had consult uh, conversations with uh, the Minister of Fisheries, who uh, Jonathan Wilkinson, who used to be the Parliamentary Secretary on this file, and he's very passionate about it, and and he's been uh, giving me his advice from the federal government, but we didn't want to find ourselves in a position where the federal government brought an order against British Columbia that would take this out of our hands completely, take it out of the hands of uh, people in the peace, take it out of the hands of uh, the indigenous community. So the best way forward is to find a way for all of us to do it together. Uh, I know uh, Minister Wilkinson at the federal level uh, is prepared to make sure we do everything we can to come forward with a plan that makes sense to their uh, legal requirements or legislative requirements. But he also understands uh, the importance of bringing people along. We're not going to have success if there's animosity in the community and we're trying to mitigate that uh, by appointing Blair and by being here today talking to community leaders and talking to Indigenous leaders. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks. Sir. Thanks. 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 Thanks.